Hello friends, welcome back to DigiTalk and part five of JBoss Red Hat EAP installation. In part four, we have covered about the installation of the open source Wildfly version of your JBoss server. And in this video, we will see how we can download and install the Red Hat EAP JBoss server instance. Okay, and then how we can start the services in standalone mode and domain mode. Okay. So when we talk about the installation of JBoss EAP, okay, which is the uh, uh, you can say proprietary button from the Red Hat, which come with the uh, support of the JBoss server from the Red Hat organization. Okay, then for that we have a three different options for the installation. Okay, or you can say we the installation come in three different format from the Red Hat EAP. Okay, where in the Wildfly we have only one zip installation. Okay, when we talk about the EAP, the first one is just like the Wildfly. There is an a zip installation for the JBoss EAP as well, which you can download and then extract the folder and then you are, you are done with the installation. Okay, and after the installation, but you have to create a user, which we have explained in the part, uh, previous part, okay, previous part four, that uh, when we uh, extract the installer of, from the zip format, then after that, it, you have to create a user for the management console login. Okay, now second option is the generic jar installation. That means it is a jar file, generic jar file, which will come from the Red Hat, okay, which you can download. And for that, you need to install a certified Java. And once it is done, then you can in initiate the installer with the help of Java, then hyphen jar, and the name of your installer jar file. This is a generic file, which would be same for your Windows as well as for your unique based operating system as well. Only you need to have a certified Java. And based on that, you can initiate the installer. Okay, and <clears throat> third one is the RPM installation. So you will get an RPM installation file as well for your JBoss from the Red Hat. Okay, and uh, there would be a different option for installation when we go for the installation of the JBoss for the RPM. That for that we have to log in as a root, and then you have to run the command yum, then group install, and the name of your RPM installation file. Okay, and important point which I haven't tested, but it is from the documentation of Red Hat that it is not supported to configure multiple domain or host controls on the same machine. Okay, when using the RPM installation, that means if you are using the RPM and you wanted to have a multiple host controllers or multiple domains in a single machine, single machine, which is not possible. So these are the three different flavors of the installer that comes from the Red Hat for the EAP. Okay, now we'll, we'll see what is the difference when we talk about the installation of the jar file. And in the part four, we have seen the installation of a zip file. Now, what is the difference between both, okay? Now to download EAP, okay, for that, you can go to developers.redhead.com website, okay? And then search for your JBoss, Red Hat JBoss, Enterprise Application Platform, and then you will get a download option for that one. Select the installer, whatever, whatever you want, okay? As you can see in the screen, you have a uh, installer file as well as you have a zip file. So whatever the installer you want, you, have to, you can download that one, okay? And then, if you have selected the jar file installer, then you will see a jar file installer is downloaded on your system. Okay. Another option is that you can download from the access.redhead.com as well. Okay. Apart from developer.redhead.com, you can download it from the access.redhead.com. But for that, we have to create a username and password for you, which is a free username and password for you. Okay. And then log in with that particular username and password and then set the product as enterprise application platform, which is a full form of EAP. Select the version that you wanted to download and then click on the download option for downloading, right? So once it is downloaded, okay? And then how we can start the installation of the jar generic installer, okay? Because in part four, we have covered the zip one. Now we are going to cover the dot jar installer, which is a graphical interface installer for your EAP, okay? So for that, you have to initiate the installer with the command java hyphen jar, then, then the name of your jar file, it will prompt you for the language, select the okay, and then it will give you the licensing agreement, okay? Click on the next. Then it will ask you for the installation path where you are going to install your EAP. Okay, this is the same folder which we have created in case of when we had the zip file, which I said it is a you are a JBoss home, or you can say it is a Wildfly home, or you can say that an EAP home. Okay, in my case it is RHTAP, so this is my Oracle home. Then it will ask you for to select the component that you want to select. Okay, then go with the default one, select all the components. Okay, and then it will prompt you to create an admin user. Okay. So as you remember that when we had uh, installed in with the zip format, okay, that is just we have extracted the file. But after that, what I said to you, you have to run the add hyphen user script. And with the help of that, you have to create a management user. Now we have the liberty to create this user from the graphical interface because now we are installing in the graphical mode of the JBoss EAP, right? So here you can give the name of your uh, management console admin user and the 
password and this is going to add in your management rename because this would be a management user for your jboss instance right then it will display you all the settings okay what is the admin user that you have given what are the installation pack or component that you have selected and then it will give you the component installation screen right and then it will prompt you for the configure runtime environment so for that you have two options perform default configuration and second is perform advanced configuration most of the time we go with the perform default configurations which is selected by default okay but anytime if you wanted to have uh, some advanced configurations like you want to enable accessible security you want uh, to enable the ldap authentication for your jboss instance you wanted to add uh, some security domain or some few more advanced configurations in that case you have to specify the advanced configuration or maybe, maybe when you wanted to install the JDBC driver when you are going to create a data source because in JBoss it is not very straightforward just like we have in WebLogic server where you can go to console and create the data sources. Okay, for JBoss it is some different process for creating a data source which I will explain which will explain in, the, in some next videos. Okay, so if you want to do certain kind of advanced configurations okay then you can select the second option which is a perform advanced configuration but i am going to select the default one which is the perform default configuration okay and this is just the screen just is showing the in options that is going to be enabled okay when you will select the perform advanced configuration that will enable all the other options install password wallet false enable ssl security ldap authentication security domain these are the configurations that you can done with the help of advanced option so it will take some time and then your installation of ea is completed okay and then it will ask you if you wanted to create the shortcut for this in the startup menus of your windows systems okay and you want to assign this shortcut for all the users or only for the user that you have logged in okay and then it, you, it will generate the installation script and properties file as well once the installation is completed okay and this is the directory structure this is a default directory structure uh which is almost same as we saw in the open source wildfly version okay there you have a uh, different folders like bin for the installation and configuration scripts and then you have a domain folder which is uh, which contains all the uh, folders and configuration files for your domain mode of jboss server and then you have a standalone folder if you wanted to to configure or start your jboss instance in the standalone mode okay and next is a start services working with default instances standalone on domain okay so by default when we uh, talk about the install standalone that is very straightforward when we are going to start a standalone instance it is a single instance of jvm okay this is a single server which is running but when we talk about the domain in domain we have uh, we have uh, multiple server groups and then we can have a multiple servers which is controlled by your centralized management console okay in the domain board but when we talk about the default startup of your services okay so if you will uh, start the domain if you start your jboss instance in the domain board then by default it will create some default uh, groups and then some default manage your admin your jboss servers inside your server groups okay so we will see what all are the different default uh, server groups that it create and the default server that it create by default okay so by default if you talk about if you talk about the standalone mode then to start the server in standalone mode and windows you can start from the startup menu as well where it will be create a folder with name jboss platform and then it will create some certain shortcuts with name start server standalone and then start server domain okay for standalone mode in windows you can run the script as well which is a standalone.bat and then unix you can use the standalone.sh script to start your instance and after that you just access the management console and with the uh, the host ip or and then the, the your management port which is by default for line zero and then slash console Okay, and then log in with the username and password which you have given during the installation, and it will display you the main screen of your JBoss instance. Okay, and if you wanted to start your servers using different profiles and ports, okay. So why it is required? As I said, there are different kind of profiles, and for each profile, there are a lot of different functionalities get enabled. Like for some profile, you will have a messaging service will get enabled. For some fun for some profiles, you will have a load balancing kind of a functionality will get enabled. So for that, you have to start your node with the help of that particular file, which is in case of a standalone server, we have a different uh, XML files for each and every profiles. Okay. For example, if I wanted to start my uh, standalone in the HA mode, okay, HA profile using the HA profile. For that, you can start the command or start your server with the help of standalone.sh or bat command. Then it specify the name of your node. If you will not specify the node, by default, it will take the server on which your JBoss instance is running, okay, and then the profile 
option or you can use a profile name with the help of hyphen hyphen server and then hyphen config equal to the name of your standalone file so you have a four or five different profiles are there whatever uh, functionality you want you can start up with that particular profile okay and second is if you want to use the port offset so what is meant by port offset is that if i said that you can start multiple jboss instances in the same machine so if you're starting the multiple jboss instances and by default when you start a jboss instance it selects the default ports from the con configuration file okay for example for management it will be used the triple line zero for web server it will use the 8080 port right but if you are starting the another server in the same machine of jboss instance then again by default it will uh, try to use the same ports which is there by default in the configuration file right so if you are starting the more than one server in your same machine then you have to specify a different port for that one okay so specify a different port you can specify with the help of port offset command okay so it will make a gap of that particular uh, the number of count that you are giving, going to give in your offset for example in, in my case i have given the uh, the offset as 200 that means it will make a gap of 200 between your new port so for example for instance one my port was triple nine zero when we talk when we start this another instance by giving the offset 200 that the my admin port would be triple nine zero plus 200 similarly if my web server port was 8080 then uh, for second instance it would be 8080 plus 200 okay so similarly you can start the multiple instances of jboss in the same server by specifying the different offset so that it can take the different ports when we go to start the, in the domain mode for that you have a domain.sh or domain.bat file okay which you can start from the windows startup option as well if you're on a windows machine okay and now as i said that in in the domain we have uh, we have different server groups and then we have a different servers inside that one okay and by by default when you go with the jboss okay when you start in the domain mode by default it gives you the certain default server groups and the default servers okay so the two main uh your default groups inside your master okay it will be main server group and other server group so by default when you will start your jboss instance in domain mode it will create two default groups one with the name main server group and second with the other server group and inside the main server group it will create two jboss server instances one with the name server one second with the name server two and inside the other server group it will create another server with the name server hyphen three so there would be two server groups by default and three servers two inside the first uh, server group and one server is inside the second server group okay which you can see from the console as well go log into your console click on runtime after runtime you can click on host okay so by default there would be a one master which we which will act as a domain controller okay so there would be a separate jvm process will initiate for this particular master okay and then after you will click on the master then you will see that different servers inside your master so we will have by default three servers with name server one server two and server three okay and below each server name you can see that server, the group that is assigned to that particular server okay so and for more clarity you can click on the server group option okay right which is on the left side instead of a host click on the server groups and once you will click on the server group, it will display you the default server it has created by default. Okay, the two main server group and other server group. Click on both the groups one by one. Okay, and then you will see it will display the servers on the right side. In this case, I have clicked on the main server group. So I have two servers, server one and server two on the right hand side displaying. And once I will click on other server group, which is the second server group by default created. Okay, then it, it will have a one other server, which is named server three okay similarly you can click on the deployment and inside that you will have a deployment uh, content repository folder and server groups okay when we deploy the application as i said server group is a group of servers where we wanted to deploy similar application for the high availability okay it is just like a cluster option where you have a uh, different servers club together in a particular server group okay and content repository is an option where when we go for the deployment of applications then we can have a content repository where we can uh, upload all of our code files okay and then from there we can activate our code files and then during the activation we can select on which server group we wanted to target the application that we will see in the next few videos where we will see the deployment in case of jboss application server so thanks for watching this video and stay tuned for a few more interesting videos